Hi, and welcome to this old house. Installing a columned room divider adds instant architectural character to your entry, but it'll do more than that. The built-in buffer also gently redirects guests and provides storage for everyone coming and going. It may help to think of this project as two elements, a built-in bookcase made of stacked boxes and a non-structural column that ties it into the ceiling. To get started, follow the cut list on this webpage to build the 2x8 base and to cut the pieces of MDF for the stack of boxes. If you don't have a table saw, don't worry. You can use a circular saw instead. The key is to clamp a straight edge, or what's called a shoot board, across the sheet of MDF to guide your saw. To actually build the storage boxes, clamp squared off blocks to the bottom piece, leaving just enough space for each side piece. Run a bead of construction adhesive along the edge of the side piece and clamp it upright against the block. Do the same thing for the other side. Then glue the top in place and hold it there with long bar clamps. Use a mallet to even up the seams, tighten the clamps, then clean up any oozing glue with an old chisel and a damp rag. Now that the box is square, countersink pilot holes and sink MDF screws to secure the corners. Flip the box over and screw down the other side as well. Then build two more boxes the same exact way. Now that you'll be working inside for a while, the first step is to pry off the baseboard molding where the divider meets the wall. If there are any receptacles that would get buried, try this little trick. Remove the cover, outline it with lipstick, and screw it on backwards. Don't ask, just leave it there for now. Now you can go ahead and position the base. Check it for level along both diagonals and shim it up if you need to. Toenail two deck screws to secure the end and anchor the other end to the wall, into a stud if at all possible. Then score the shims and just snap them off. Time to start stacking. Glue an MDF panel right onto the base and screw it down. The next MDF panel is smaller, the same size as the boxes. Glue it down and use a piece of scrap to get the correct inset for the face frame and the back panel of the cabinet. We also left a 3 quarter inch gap at the wall to account for crooked walls. Clamp the panel in position and screw it down, then check for level before moving on to the next step. Okay, about that receptacle. Press the MDF box against the cover to get the lipstick to transfer an outline. Drill holes at each corner of the outline and use a jigsaw to cut inside the lines. Back in the house, glue the box in place, cut the power to the outlet, and pass it through the cutout. Before you restore the power, install a box extender to the outlet and screw the receptacle to that ring. Now back to the cabinet. Glue and tack two more boxes on the stack. Then add a filler panel on top. Wedge wooden shims in between the stack and the wall and use a long deck screw to anchor it into a stud. Now that you've got your boxes stacked up, measure and cut the back panel of the cabinet to fit. Glue it on, clamp it in place, and screw it down. Just be sure to drill pilot holes first with a countersink bit before driving screws. Otherwise, you'll probably damage the MDF. To create the face frame, first measure and cut the front and back styles. Glue and tack them in place, against the wall on one side, and overhanging by 3 quarters of an inch on the other end, the one that's open to the room. For the styles on the end of the cabinet, rip pieces 3 quarters of an inch wide, and butt them up against the overhanging styles that you just installed. That way, the trim measures an inch and a half on both sides of the corners. Glue them in place, and tack them down with brad nails. With the styles in place, measure, cut, and install the rails. Then you can add two more MDF panels on top of the entire stack that fit flush with the face frame. Now it's time to build the column. To start out, subtract the width of the nailing blocks from the width of the cabinet top and divide that result in half. Use a combination square to mark the location right on the cabinet top. Then glue and screw down the blocks. Measure from the top of the cabinet to the ceiling and cut four column panels to fit. Slip one panel into position between the ceiling and the top of the cabinet and clamp it to the blocking. Use a long level to plumb the piece and then mark the ceiling. Next, glue along the edge of an abutting panel and join the two to form a corner. Then, nail them together with your brad nailer. The upper nailing block goes right in the crook of this column assembly. Next, glue and nail the last two sides of the column in place. Then to secure the column, use screws at the top and nails at the bottom. You're going to finish up the piece by installing all the trim. Starting at the top, measure and cut pieces of MDF to add a capital to the column. 
Then comes the solid crown molding to trim the edge of the cabinet top. The easiest way is to start with the sides. Cut the wall end at 90 degrees and the other end at 45 degrees. Then glue and nail those two pieces in place. Then you just have to trim the end piece to fit between those two 45 degree angles. Glue and nail the 1x8 baseboard in place, then add the baseboard cap, and finally add shoe molding to cover any gaps along the floor. Fill any holes, sand any rough seams where the MDF meets, then prime and paint the entire structure. Once the paint's dry, you're ready to stand back and say hello to your new entryway.